This is a graph that describes the behavior of the molecules that we just saw. This is the number of molecules possessing each kinetic energy. Here's low kinetic energy and here's high kinetic energy or faster molecules. You notice that there's a few molecules with low kinetic energy and there's quite a few molecules with medium kinetic energy. And as we move along, there's less molecules with high kinetic energy. So this graph shows the distribution of kinetic energies of the molecules. Now let's review a term we've looked at before, activation energy. Activation energy is a minimum kinetic energy particles must collide with in order to have a successful collision. It's also called the EA. So looking at our kinetic energy distribution, again the x-axis is the axis for kinetic energy. Let's say that for a particular reaction, this is the activation energy here. What we can do is we can draw a vertical line through this graph and call it EA. Each point on this line gives the number of molecules with each kinetic energy. So for example, there's this many molecules that possess this amount of kinetic energy. The total number of molecules with a certain range of kinetic energies can be found by taking the total area under the curve for that interval. For example, let's consider the interval of the molecules with kinetic energy greater than or equal to the activation energy, Ea. That would be represented by this interval here. So the shaded region, the area under the curve here in this interval, represents the total number of molecules with kinetic energy greater than or equal to Ea. The total area under the curve represents the total population of the molecules in the sample. Let's say we want to find the fraction of molecules in the particular sample that have kinetic energy greater than or equal to Ea. So what we could do is we could estimate how many of these little triangles would fit under the whole curve that represents the total area. So with a little imagination, we can see that there's about 20 of these that will fit under the whole curve. So about 1 in 20 of the molecules have kinetic energy greater than or equal to Ea, or about 1 20th of the molecules have sufficient kinetic energy for a successful collision. Because there's only 1 20th of the molecules that have sufficient energy, do you think this reaction will be fast or slow? Well, it would probably be slow. So what happens to this distribution if the temperature is increased? Let's have a look at the model. When the temperature is increased, we haven't added or taken away any molecules. So what do you think will happen to the total area under the curve? It'll stay the same. But do we have more or less slow molecules now? Well, you can see we have less slow molecules. Do we have more or less fast molecules? Well, we have more fast molecules. So the kinetic energy graph does the following. So at a higher temperature, indicated by the red curve, you see we have less slow molecules and we have more fast molecules. We notice that the whole curve has moved toward the right and flattened out a bit. But the total area under the curve remains the same. Now let's put the activation energy Ea in again. This interval here represents the molecules with kinetic energy greater than or equal to Ea at the lower temperature. So this triangle here represents all of the molecules with kinetic energy greater than or equal to Ea for the lower temperature. Let's see what happens with the higher temperature. 
Here is the interval for the molecules with kinetic energy greater than or equal to Ea for the higher temperature. So this triangle represents the molecules with kinetic energy greater than or equal to Ea at the higher temperature. You'll see that when the temperature is increased, the number of molecules in this category has increased quite a bit. Now we can find the fraction of molecules with kinetic energy greater than or equal to Ea. Let's see how many of these triangles we can fit under the whole curve. You can see we can very roughly fit about nine of these triangles under the whole curve. So that means about one in nine, or one ninth of the molecules, have kinetic energy greater than or equal to Ea. So at the higher temperature, about one ninth of the molecules have enough kinetic energy for a successful collision. While at the lower temperature, only about one twentieth of the molecules had enough energy. So when the temperature is increased, the fraction or the percentage of the molecules with sufficient kinetic energy increases. This means a higher fraction of the collisions are effective. And this means the rate of the reaction will increase. There's a little rule of thumb that they've come up with. It states that if the activation energy is near the tail of the curve, or the right hand side of the curve, that if the temperature is increased by about 10 degrees, the reaction rate will approximately double. That is, about twice the number of molecules will have sufficient kinetic energy for a successful collision. So here's a graph with lower temperature and higher temperature curve on the same graph. You'll notice at the lower temperature, which is this one, these molecules under this little triangle are the ones that have sufficient energy for a successful collision. At the higher temperature, the curve shifts over to the right, and we can see that we have about double the number of molecules now that have sufficient kinetic energy. That makes the reaction about twice as fast. If the activation energy is near the middle or left side of the curve, in other words, if it's low, the reaction's already fast, so an increase in temperature has a much less drastic effect on the reaction rate. So here's such a case here. The Ea is relatively low. You notice in this case that the total area under the T1 plus 10 curve is not significantly different than the area under the T1 curve. So increasing the temperature by 10 degrees had very little effect on the reaction rate in this case. So increasing the temperature has a much greater effect on the reaction rate if the activation energy is high or near the tail of the curve. Understanding these kinetic energy distributions helps us refine the collision theory a little bit more. We can now use the collision theory to more accurately explain why increasing the temperature increases the reaction rate. There's actually two reasons that the temperature increases reaction rate. The first reason is, is there's simply a higher probability or chance of collisions. When the molecules are moving faster, they're covering more distance in a certain time, so there is a greater chance that they'll collide. The second reason is a greater fraction or percentage of the molecules have collisions with sufficient kinetic energy, greater than or equal to Ea. So therefore, a greater percentage or fraction of the collisions will be effective. Reason two, the fraction of collisions, is the main reason why temperature increases reaction rate. Here's a little question for you. If the rate of a certain reaction is doubled when the temperature is increased by 10 degrees and the initial rate is 2.5 grams per minute at 10 degrees, calculate the approximate rate at a temperature of 40 degrees. Try this on your own, see if you can come up with an answer, and then start the video again and look through my solution and see if you get the right answer. So one way we can do this is with a little table. Here's the temperature and here's the rate. If the temperature is 10 degrees, the rate is 2.5 grams per minute. When we increase the temperature by 10 degrees, it goes up to 20. And remember, the rule is when every time we increase the temperature by 10 degrees, the rate doubles. So 2.5 times 2 becomes 5. If we increase the temperature by another 10 degrees, bringing it up to 30, the rate will double again, and it'll become 10. Bringing the temperature up to 40, 
adding another 10 degrees, we'll double the rate again. So 10 times 2 is 20. So therefore the rate at 40 degrees would be 20 grams per minute.